All right, it's time for uh, Peter's Pain Podcast, and let's see if I can't uh, do this the right way right off the bat. Let's see here. Oh. Hello, Daddy O. Hey, Darren O. How are you doing? You ready to do your podcast? Yes, sir. Right. Ready for it. <laughs> it's uh, Peter's Pain Podcast, and as always, all the paintings you see on the podcast are available for purchase they run between 200 to 500 dollars inquire in the comments and then you get a personal relationship with my father and my mother because technology completely eludes them but we're going to talk about a couple of paintings coming up here so like and subscribe and thanks for watching dad what's new what's uh what's your week been like this week what have you been up to well i'm looking out at a full killer king tide and uh rain that's what's happening here. And uh, it's been, uh, up till now, it's been pretty mild. How's the weather out there? The weather's been good. I've, I actually have a little bit of a new backdrop as we're getting to move a little bit. And we're cleaning yeah, the house. I saw that. I saw that. And I'm trying to point right there. You can't see what I'm pointing, but I'm pointing no. at, at a, a painting. And you can see the, or it's a photograph, actually, of our backyard, the inlet. And yeah. um, so people can get sort of an idea. Of what it okay. looks like. And at, at, at the highest of tide, you can't see the marsh at all, correct? Oh, no. You can't see anything. It looks like an ocean. Yeah. At full tide, yeah. This The winter, though, you get some of these uh, rip tide, these killer-type killer, killer type car tides. Very high. In fact, about a week ago, uh, we had so much water at the very beginning of Island Park and Jeffrey's Neck Road that it was about three feet high. And there's a picture in the local newspaper about a kid canoeing a kayaking down Jeffrey's Neck Road. Right Get out of window. here. Really? I'm not kidding you. In fact, I was going to, I, I thought I had that and I misplaced it. I was going to send it to you. It's about three issues ago. It was unbelievable. It was on a Saturday. And if we had tried to get out, of course, we couldn't till the tide went down. But that's the first time in 45 years it's been that high down the end of the street. It's Dad, what, uh, give me, give me a scenario where you would just have to leave the house and get off the street like like get what what would be the emergency in your life that that would have okay. to happen then then we would take a two-person kayak drag it down the road <laughs> and we we would get we would be able to get out of it that way yeah my so. parents do have it's <laughs> funny because that's where we lived i'm pointing at the painting <laughs> to this day uh you and, and mom get out in a kayak don't you <laughs> Where do you guys go? Where, no, seriously, when you get out in the kayak, where do you and mom actually go? Well, we go, we paddle up to um, the uh, uh, Little Neck, and we'll be in our bathing suits, and we'll, we'll jump in there for a swim. Will you really? And... You'll paddle from the house all the way to Little Neck? Really? Seriously? Oh, oh, sure. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, we can do that in about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll wow. just uh, paddle around there, you know. And then we might go up uh, river to uh, head into downtown. Wouldn't go that far, but uh, yeah, we could. Paddle. Would you? I mean, would you? Well, have you? Have you ever paddled to the wharf? No, we've never paddled that far. No, right, that's never, that's a long way to go. That is, but a two-person kayak. I mean, we can go four or five hundred miles an hour. <laughs> All right, Dad. <laughs> How you doing, Darren? I'm hey, just I'm so. Proud of you losing thirty pounds, man. You're looking great. Oh, yeah, looking yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Great. I'm an up and down sort of guy, Daddy O. So, but um, uh, but, but you look you look really good. And how's your house selling? What's the proceedings? Well, we haven't. Well, we're cleaning, and uh, you can hear like you hear the vacuum cleaner upstairs as Kim is just we're we're, you know what we're doing? We're we're cleaning um, both physically and mentally. We're uncluttering yeah. Yeah. our lives, and right. right. You know, uh, it's a hard thing to do because it's crazy yeah. what you just end up collecting. And a yeah. lot of the things that we're getting rid of or throwing away, Dad, we haven't, you know, we haven't looked at it in 20 years. And if you haven't looked yeah, at right. something in 20 years, Get why? You know, I had old, like, um, uh, audio tapes from Syracuse. Syracuse, uh, back yeah, in the well. 80s. Audio tapes <laughs> that you could only play on real to real machines that yeah. just don't even exist. Right, and I right. mean, I'm like, I'm holding on to these big, they're called pancake reels. And yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, it's got sentimental value because this is how it all started. And 
this is, oh boy, I got to keep this. But I'm like, why? Who gives a shit? You know, right, right. I mean, you know, Connor and Dylan don't care. They they want to hear stories about my old radio days like they want a hammer to the head. <laughs> so, I hear you. I, I hear you. Now, yeah. in your yeah. office, in your office, yeah. you know what would be fun someday? You should, you and Mom, you should take photos of your office. And oh. we can on this podcast just sort of zoom in and go through, like, because you're – so uh, my background right here is kind of cluttered and whatever. This that's nothing. Yeah. This what I have here is nothing compared to what you have in your office. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it took forty five years to get it to look like that. I mean, you have clippings of when Will McDonough, the sports writer, was writing for the Northeastern School Paper about you as a pitcher when you were like nineteen, twenty years old. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the title was. Uh... McKee was the first pitcher to go nine innings. Uh, we had played some games before, but we hadn't gone nine innings. That was the title of his pitcher. Will Will was on the team. He was a pitcher too. Great writer. And well, I uh, thought he was a catcher. Yeah. Well, it was a, a game we I I uh, was playing. I forget it was Harvard or Rhode Island. What I can't remember right now. I'd have to look at the have to look at the thing. But he also took a picture of me. Uh, in the windup, so it was in that northeastern news. That's a little northeastern. So paper. not only he was did. he on the team, but he, he also wrote about the team. Yes, he did. Yeah, he That's did. That's pretty he funny. Was, he was writing at a very young age. Yeah, great guy. Uh, he was a tremendous tennis player. I used to see him down the Hingham courts when he moved to Hingham over, but he moved over by the yacht club there with a nice view of the Hingham Harbor and Quincy Bay. And uh, Will was playing with, um, oh, that famous uh, sports writer for, for uh, tennis. Uh, I forget, but uh, he but, is really but, uh, Yeah, but, um, oh, my gosh, the ball guy. Oh, my yeah, God. Bud, Bud Collins. Bud, Bud Collins. Collins. Bud Collins. He and Bud yeah. Collins were good buddies, and they, they used to play down in the Hingham uh, 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 tennis courts. And Mom and I would see him. And uh, when we were playing with uh, Brookie Granger and John Young, and uh, I couldn't believe he's a big, pretty big guy. I couldn't believe what a great tennis player uh, Will was. But uh, unfortunately, he passed. And uh, I, I always liked him. In fact, uh, you remember the time we were in Fenway Park, and uh, he came up. He was coming up the stairs. We were going down into the seats. Yeah. And he said, "Hi, Pete." And I said, "Hi, Will." And I introduced you to him. I do. You remember that? You do, I do. remember that day? Yeah. I that was that was like you then. that was like the one famous person you knew. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was it. I don't know if you knew any other famous people, but but no. but but you knew Will McDonough, and yeah, I knew Will McDonough, a buddy, but a good buddy of mine, yeah, yeah, yeah that was cool, yeah. cool story. Yeah, that was, anyways. Hey, you got a birthday coming up with the corner, right? What, March 4th? Your grandchild, your 24, your, I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah, you have a 24 year old grandchild. <laughs> Almost. Oh, D- Donovan's coming up. And, yeah, uh, on yeah, yeah. You have 20th. two, right? He'll be, he'll be twenty-four. I Jesus. know. I can't believe it. I can remember when they were just very tiny. T- God, you know you're fucking old when you've got twenty-four-year-old grandchildren. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, you had a good night last night with the, uh, with the Nuggets. Well, Dad, we I, tape, we tape this on Friday, everybody. We tape this Friday, yeah. and then it plays on Sunday. So. Yeah. You always well, I, I, So yeah, Thursday well, Thursday night. Yes, Thursday night uh the Nuggets beat the Wizards. But well, they I like what Malone said about uh, Russell that uh, when he blocked oh, yeah, shots, he yeah. always blocked it into the court, yeah. not outside and, right. and the palm con lady uh, the uh, some lady in the, you don't want to hit, uh, hey dad. You don't want to hit the popcorn lady in the ass but, with the basketball. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I like that. But uh, Bill was uh, oh. he was my favorite. My favorite basketball player of all time, Bill Russell. I'll I'll tell one, Coach one Malone the, that uh, um your hey, comment. Speaking of Coach, yeah. hey, speaking of Coach Malone uh, and basketball, did you ever did you get that uh, article I sent you about that that great kid, the uh, the basketball player from Maine? I did. Who's did, did I said uh, send it over to Malone? Maybe they can draft him. He sounds like another Larry Bird. Got the same height. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, you know the the Nuggets. I'm sure the Nuggets are. Uh, Gonna look at think, for the draft at some point, but you the, think you think they're aware of him? <laughs> the kid's in high school, Dad. He hasn't even gone. He's going to Duke, so we'll we'll yeah, they got they got a, time. He'll be a Dad, one and done at Duke. Dad, one Dad. and done. 
Do yeah. you think the Denver Nuggets, our world champs, yes. are going to be high enough in the draft to draft a kid like – when, oh, do you, no, no. They, when exactly they, they, do you think the Nuggets are going to suck again? No, never. Not as long as they've got the Joker. But That's I'll right. tell you, That's right. somebody's going to grab. Somebody's going to grab that kid. He's. Uh, I couldn't believe that was in the New Yorker of all magazines. That's well, that wasn't in a sports magazine. Let's talk I about your. Not. Let's talk about your paintings, Dad. Okay. I, I appreciate okay. you yeah. sending me articles about high school basketball players, but let's talk yeah. about you and what you got going on on Peter's oh, okay. painting podcast. Okay. And we're going to yeah. start with Pebble Beach Pebbles. Pebble oh, Beach no. Pebbles. Okay, yeah. what is the deal with Pebble Beach Pebbles? Okay, so here's the deal. Um, let's see. Well, years ago when I lived out in uh, San Francisco, I would uh, occasionally uh, on weekends uh, drive south on Coastal Route 1, which is a very scenic drive, which I'm sure you know about. And I would end up in uh, Monterey, Pebble Beach, Carmel area where I would always, you know, take the famous 17-mile drive to Big Sur. Uh, that is a very famous drive, and uh, I think we took it once when we were out there as a family. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, this road goes right through the legendary uh, Pebble Beach golf courses. I think there's four of them. And uh, right through the uh, – it follows – it, it really hugs the coastline. And I love this area. I mean, who would – Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, and just, yeah, you know, and it's still gorgeous. And anyways, uh, I was attracted to the uh, name Pebble Beach. I always liked that name and wondered how many millions of pebbles there were on the sunny beaches, uh, which is some crazy reason uh, that I had. And I always I always ran this through my mind on each trip, and I took quite a few trips down there. So, I don't know, let's see, about 10 years ago, I was thinking about Pebble Beach and thought what it would look like if all the beach pebbles were different colors both on the beach and underwater when the tide uh, was up. So I put brush to canvas, and the painting is what I came up with. That's what you see there. How many pebbles do you think are on here? Well, I've never counted them. but I'm, <laughs> how, I'm did you even, how did you even wrap your head around, like, well, this <laughs> one's big and this one's – I mean, there's got to be <laughs> – there's got to be 500 dots here, 500 pebbles on – I mean, you know, this is a very self-explanatory sort of painting. You know, I don't yeah, think there's anything right. – all that deep to it i i think there's um unless there is something more deep to it uh no but, no no it's just an abstract i don't know how many there's several hundred obviously it's crazy uh, how many pebbles are actually on medium ones but uh it's just some crazy thought i had if what what pebbles would look like on pebble beach if they were if they were colored maybe at one time they were and they just got worn off by the the tides but that was the that was the background of that uh painting i love and it I it's, think a, it was, it's a beautiful I think painting. it was nice uh, 2014, I think I did that one. All right. Yeah. Well, that's Pebble Beach Pebbles. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's just a happy. This to me is just a cool, happy, upbeat, um, not so deep, but fun sort no. of painting. And it, it is fun yeah. to hear what inspired it as well. Uh, yeah, we go on cool. to yeah. uh, Spinning Time Clock. And this yeah. one looks a little bit more interesting. So what what is the details behind Spinning Time Clock? Okay, spending time clock. Um, Which is relatively well, so, new as well, just a couple of years yeah, old. Yeah, it is. A couple, couple of years, yeah. Uh, several years, uh, maybe two, two and a half years ago, your mom and I were visiting the Portland, Maine Art Museum, which is one of our favorites. So we go up there two to three trips a year to see it and, uh, and then get a lobster or something. And so uh, we hit the uh, – we were wandering around. We knew it pretty good, but they put a new section in, and it was displaying Georgia O'Keeffe paintings. And we were struck by a work that was completely different from her usual collection of haunting deserts, uh, exploding flowers, animal skulls, and endless mountains. I'm sure you're familiar with all those type of paintings. Anyways, uh, this painting looked like a clock that had had spinning windmills flying around. They It just looked really different. I would never have guessed in a million years that she created this work. Uh, and for some reason, the image stuck in my brain, and I fooled around with some drawings trying to capture the motion. I remember I didn't take any pictures or anything, so I'm trying to remember what it looked like. And uh, so this is a result of my memories of that museum day. Uh, of course, it's nowhere near, nowhere near the town of Georgia O'Keeffe, but yeah. it's a thank you to her for allowing Eileen and myself to observe 
her immense creative genius. Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty so, cool. Yeah, that, it's kind of a amazing. tribute to George O'Keefe, who I love her paintings. And well, that's that's a story of that, that thing. <laughs> well, that's Does a great show story. Moment, can you see movement to it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing seems spinning. Yeah, it's for yeah. sure. Oh, no, you can definitely feel it. It feels almost um, a little chaotic, too. You yeah, know, yeah. like there's yeah. like there's a lot going like things are almost spinning out of control. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, that's what like, I try to get that image. Yeah. That's, yeah. Like the clock on is on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. The clock Wait. is like exploding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you saw that. I, that uh, that was kind of in the back of my mind. But uh, she um, she had her own. They had built a new wing or something. I don't know. But she had her own uh, pictures. of. She must have had at least 50, 45 to 50 different different pictures oh, and wow. uh she's just very colorful i always loved her uh artwork and uh anyways and she has given a lot of pleasure to millions of people i'm sure over the years all right well she's, here, got, quite a, she's got quite a history uh, quite a history here are the two paintings this week it's spinning time clock it's pebble beach pebbles and uh it's uh it's daddy-o my guy um <laughs> good stuff my man i appreciate it what uh what what's the best thing you and mom are doing this weekend? Well, it's hard to say because of of the weather. Uh, but we, hey, Dad, a, Dad, hold on, Dad, yeah. is it sweater weather? Oh no, no, it's not sweater weather. Not, it's uh, not sweater it's weather. Right, right. It will be according to uh, what they say in the newspaper. The temperature will be going up, so it'll be jacket weather. Uh, but uh, there's a group that she likes some music that uh, we think we'll see it's up in uh, uh, New Hampshire. And uh, I don't know if we'll do it or not, but it's in our tentative plans. And uh, so we may be listening to some music this weekend. Dad, what do you do um, when you're in the kayak with mom and a fast boat goes too close to you, creating, creating a, a large wake? What, what do you yell at the uh, boat boat people? Well, we just wave the oars. They, they're pretty good. I mean, uh, we, it's happened to us two or three times, but... Generally, the motorists, the motor people are pretty good, but you have to be careful because it's a fairly narrow section up beyond, way up beyond the islands, and they can create some waves. They come. To, it's not the boat so much. It's those, uh, what do you call jet those skis. things they ride? Jet skis. Jet oh, skis. my God. Yeah. That's a, that's a big fear, the jet skis. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to be careful, and if they come too close, we just wave our oars, and usually they just take off. But you have to be a observant because at some point there as you know it's a yeah. pretty narrow pretty narrow breach but that won't be for a while do you, dad I dad now. dad i got a i got a joke for you do, you do you know who the best kayaker was ever in the history of the boston bruins Ooh, what a question uh i would say i'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess uh, let me let me think on that. That's, Just say I don't know, I, Dad. It's a joke. Just say I, I don't know. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> the best kayaker on the... Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr! That's right! Bobby Orr! Bobby. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, it's, you... a, it's Dad, it's a joke. His last name's oh. Orr. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Dad. I, uh, I love you, Dad. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later, my man. Yeah, give me best. Uh, say hi to Johnny wherever he is. All right. All right. We, okay. We'll talk to yeah. you. There it is. Right. Bobby Orr. It's the best kayak on the Bruins. I don't know. Who is it? Bobby Orr. Peter's Paint Podcast, available for purchase. Just inquire in the comments. Yeah, I love my dad. He was really thinking about kayakers and the Bruins.